of the biggest curses that modernity gave us <laughs> was presenting a separation between humanity and the rest of the world and the rest and the ecosystem that we are part of and that we come from. Um, and you know, in a more poetic way, it's, it's detaching the children from their mother and their siblings. Um, and so when we look at climate change and the very real, you know, dangers of, um, and, and happenings, unfortunately, some of which are completely irreversible, um, of the degradation of our ecosystem and our environment of other beings' ecosystems, um, for greed, I think... I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we are so short-sighted and hard-headed, um, particularly in the hegemonic powers of this world, that we will not understand that we can't eat money until we can't drink our own water. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. And I think um, that we've had the privilege, um, many of us, as, as societies, individual levels is obviously very different. But as societies who, who have hegemonic power, um, I think that we've had the privilege to, to divest ourselves um, from feeling some of the very abrupt, very serious changes um, that, we, that, that is happening in the climate, um, that are happening in, in our world. Um, and so I think the first step as humanity in, you know, um, responding to climate change is readdressing the way in which we fit within our environment. Um, you know, re-understanding the fact that yes, all humans, no matter where they come from, are made up mostly of water. So by default, in a form of selfishness, that should be the first thing that we protect. Second, our air, we all breathe it, we all have lungs. In a form of selfishness, that's the second thing we should protect. We want to talk about food resources and our ability to live. Maybe the land should be looked at as something that we should protect as we also live on it. Um, but really, if we want to talk about a compassion-based a compassion -based model um, and something that really will get us to a future that is sustainable, um, if that's possible, I think that we have to look as this, uh, at this as, as um, a connective system, truly, which means that we should be concerned um, about other animals. We should be concerned about plants. We should be concerned about um, you know insects and what they're experiencing and the things that we're taking away from them because they're alive as much as we are alive. Um, and I think that we should be able to value um, the things that we call resources such as you know our water, our air, our land um, without putting a monetary value on them. And they we should we should respond in, in the same form of compassion but also wisdom, seeing their inherent worth. Um, and so we are called, really, we have a duty to protect our environment and to, um, you know, stop harming um, the mother that feeds us, Mother Earth, um, and, and sustains us. And so um, if we can uh, act, you know, at all from any beginning premonition, I think that's great. And if we can act um, eventually in compassion for one another and in compassion for um, the things that are both inside and, and outside of us at the same time, um, then I think um, we have a shot at preserving um, our world. And I think if we don't act, uh, or I know that if we don't act, we'll surely die.